begin in verse 4, read through verse 8. John wrote for us, these are the words of Jesus, he recorded Jesus' words here in verse 4. Remain in me, Jesus said, remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. And such branches are picked up and they're thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given. And this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Let's begin our time in God's Word through prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your Word. Father, we believe it and are confident that it is, in tr that it is indeed true. That it is trustworthy. Father, that through your word and the Holy Spirit, our lives are changed. And so, Lord, this morning, as we open up your word, as we study your word, as we are challenged to apply your word, God, I pray that through this time, that there indeed would be the process of bearing fruit. God, that our lives, as our lives are saturated with your word, God, that we would see good things come about because of it. And Lord, that we would glorify the Father in all of these things. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. A couple weeks ago, I was at Home Depot. I enjoy spending time in Home Depot, quite frankly. Some people, yeah, it's just a place I love going. And I was going there for the purpose of purchasing a hammer. I don't know how many of you have had the need to purchase a hammer recently or not, but I had a need. Probably just had an excuse, honestly. And I went to the hammer section, and you can't just go and purchase. They just don't have one kind of hammer there, do they? I mean, they've got like 20 different hammers for multiple applications. And I'm going there thinking all I wanted was a hammer. It's almost like there's no one-size-fits-all type of hammer. You've got big sledgehammers all the way to hammers that you would use for finishing nails, for the more finer details of your project. Uh, you've got hammers that are clearly for woodworking, you have hammers for metalworking, you have hammers for masonry work. It's, it's all there, all of these different hammers, and they all have multiple applications. Again, I would not use a 5 or 10 pound sledgehammer to put up trim around my windows, would I? Instead, I would go and get a finishing hammer to put in those finishing nails. We started this year out with this teaching series titled Growing in Christ. And the idea, what we're attempting to do is establish a foundation in all of our lives so that we can indeed experience a growing relationship with our Lord and Savior this year. In other words, as we started out a few weeks ago, we essentially set out and said that by the time December rolls around, we want to have grown in knowing Christ more and more. And I hope that indeed is true 
for your life. And in any relationship, we know that communication is vital, isn't it? That if you're going to grow in your relationship with someone here in this world, uh, you've got to be able to know how to talk with them, how to communicate with them. And spiritually speaking, the way in which we communicate with God is through hearing from Him through His Word and then speaking to Him in prayer. You might remember Dan started off this series with the habit of praying, helping us establish a good habit of, of a prayer life and, and echoing the words that the disciples said where they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. I think that's a good place for us to start, isn't it? To be willing to acknowledge and say, boy, I've got a lot of growing I can do when it comes to my prayer life. And then the week after that, I shared about the habit of God's Word. How God's Word, you might remember, how it shapes us like the potter takes the lump of clay and through that repetition time and time and time again, the potter takes the lump of clay and shapes it into something beautiful. Or as the soldier sharpens his sword, it's that repetition, it's that habit, that daily habit of, of over and over and over again. And that's what God's Word does. It, it shapes us. It sharpens us. Or maybe you might remember it was that illustration that I used of Mary playing that game with our children of, of go away and come back. Go away and come back. And how the kids, they, they were just filled with joy. And the soundtrack of our home is that of laughter as the children continue to repeat and say, do it again, Mommy. Do it again. Do it again. And we see the value of these habits, these, this repetition, the habit of prayer, the habit of God's Word, and how that indeed is the means through establishing good communication with our Lord so that we might find ourselves growing in Him. This morning, we're taking the habit of prayer, we're, habit, we're taking the, the habit of God's Word, and we're essentially smooshing it together as one. This is the last of our teaching series. Obviously, we bumped it back a week because of last week's absence. But the title of this morning's sermon is The Habit of Praying God's Word. It's the habit of praying God's Word. Again, we're taking the habit of God's Word, we're taking the habit of prayer, and we're putting them together so that maybe our, our lives, so that our our relationship with the Lord can be that of a growing relationship, a vibrant relationship with Him. And this morning we're going to take this time to learn what it means to actually pray God's Word. I just want to take a quick time out and provide a, a rather brief commentary. I don't necessarily call this a sermon. Instead I would call this more or less a lesson. This is, this is a time of equipping. Here's what I want. Here's the goal for you after this morning's lesson. Is that you will have felt as if you walked into the Home Depot of prayer. The Home Depot of God's Word. And that you would be equipped with a hammer to go out and be able to apply this this very afternoon. And so that you would be growing in your relationship with the Lord. And so that today, this afternoon... You can begin applying exactly what we're going to be discussing over the next few minutes. This morning, I don't have a big idea for you. I don't have a big idea, even though on your handout it says big idea. By the time print time came around, I put that. But last night, I changed it from a big idea to a big question. This is the big question that I want you to ask yourself each time after you spend time in God's Word, it's how does this Scripture passage prompt me to pray? How does this Scripture passage prompt me now to pray? I will be the first to admit that there are times in my life when Bible reading is nothing more than a check mark on my to-do list. Or that Bible reading can at times 
feel as if it's just something that I need to do because that's what pastors should do. That's what believers, Christians, Christ followers should do. And so I open my Bible, I read it, I get to the end of a chapter or end of a passage, I close it, and I go on throughout the course of my day. And it's almost as if the power of God's Word just sits there idle without taking deep root or de having a deep impact on my life. And so what I want to challenge us to do, that as we leave this afternoon, as we attempt to become better equipped in a growing relationship with the Lord, is to ask this big question. To not just close our Bibles and say, well, that was nice, let me check it off my to-do list and get about my day, but instead to ask this question, how does this scripture passage prompt me to pray now throughout the course of my day?